Hello there and welcome back to the All Pond Solutions channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at yet another All Pond Solutions filter. And this one is very similar to one we've taken a look at previously. Now this is the upgraded version of the 1000 EF, which for you guys in the US is known as the Sun Sun 302. I think there might be a version by Top Fin as well, either in the US or in Canada. I'm not sure about that, but when we get into it, you might notice that this looks pretty familiar. As I say, this one is the upgraded version. We've already taken a look at the 1000 EF from All Pond Solutions. So it'd be interesting to see what, if anything, is different with this one. I don't think there's a, a whole lot difference, but um, hopefully there's a few upgrades. Probably holds a similar amount, so really, if you've already watched the previous 1000 EF video, Shortly into this you might realise there's not much point in watching this video, but if you're looking to upgrade from the older model to this one, you might want to take a look. Okay, so this one has come directly from the manufacturer, and this was sent to me by a guy with the best name in the world, which is of course Richard. Thank you very much Richard for sending me this. Inside of here is exactly as it comes from the manufacturer. So we'll bring the camera in, take the top off, have a look inside, I'll explain how the water flows through it. I'll also point out any glaring differences between this one and the previous version. And then we'll see if we can upgrade it to make it more efficient. Now this one pumps out 1000 litres per hour, which I think is 264 US gallons per hour. Now these filters are apparently for tanks up to 400 litres, which is about 108 US gallons. As we know, those figures are always at least double what it is actually suitable for. But we'll get into it, uh, see how much media it holds and pass judgement on it from there. That opens in pretty much the same way as the previous model. We've got a nice big priming button on there that's absolutely massive. You know, so when we get it filled up after maintenance and connect all the pipes and everything, we can give it a good priming. Apparently that works pretty well according to the reviews. Okay, so the water comes in through this massive hole and goes down to the bottom of the filter through another massive hole. Now in the model with the UV light, you would have a shroud over here and you would have the UV light in here. So that would slot down there. So the water would come in, it would go over the UV light, down to the bottom and then up through the trays. In ours, we haven't got a UV light. This is the basic model. So water comes in, down to the bottom, up through the trays, gets sucked out through the pump and spat out back to the tank. So when we take this apart, we're expecting to see the foams all in the bottom because that is where our mechanical filtration needs to be done. So what do we got? Got some pretty good quality sintered glass rings. Now often they're ceramic rings, these ones I can almost positively say are sintered glass. I've had some of these out from a previous filter and they feel good. Um, they've actually got quite a thick wall as well. So they're a lot better than much of the media that comes with these cheap filters. They're not actually a bad media. Under that we have a fine pad. Next tray down we've got really nothing more than a token gesture of plastic balls which are hopeless followed by another fine pad having multiple fine pads is okay because we can use them as spares and then in the bottom we've got carbon that again is in the wrong place followed by another fine pad in the bottom of here we do have space for some primary settlement so when the water comes down through the middle of those trays, it'll hit cheap media in the bottom of here, which will settle the flow. So let's set this up how it should be set up. Okay, so in the very bottom, before we even get to the trays, we're gonna put some Eheim Mech. This is very small ceramic tubes. It's absolutely perfect for putting in there to take the heavy muck, to redirect the flow, just to slow it down a bit and settle out some of that heavy muck before it gets to the trees.
and in there we've got about half a kilo. So our bottom tray that had the carbon on, we're going to whip that pad out and we're going to use this as a template to cut a coarse pad and a medium pad. So we can go coarse, medium, then fine. That'll sort out all the mechanical filtration. All the muck will be held in the bottom third of the filter. So I'll just cut a couple of foams, put them in, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so we've got our bottom tray. We've cut some foams, which are the same as this template. So, coarse foam goes into the bottom, followed by our medium foam, and if you notice, it's got dimples on. That goes down so it faces the flow and that gives us the maximum surface area which means it's going to take longer before it gets clogged. A lot of people still argue about this on YouTube and I know a lot of the big channels actively encourage people not to go for this sort of foam but it makes perfect sense. Some of the manufacturers are coming around to the idea of using the dimpled foams because it is better. And the most notable of those is Fluval. In their 07 series, they've started using the dimpled foams. Right, so, water comes up, it hits coarse pad, medium pad, and because we've got the flat bit of the coarse pad meeting up with the dimpled bit of the medium pad, that creates cavities, that traps a hell of a lot of muck. Then it goes through the fine pad then it travels up through our filter media. So that is the bottom tray complete. We simply drop that in, empty the next two trays out, fill those with filter media, and we're pretty much done. And when we empty those bottom trays out, that gives us two spare fine pads. And because these are disposable when they get totally clogged, that's good. We've got two spares, so I can send those back to Richard. We only need one at a time. Okay, so we've got two trays filled with Biohome Ultimate. They go in, one, two, and in each tray there's approximately one kilo of media, which for you guys in the US is 2.2 pounds. So in total, in this filter we can get just over two kilos. We put the grate on the top, get the pump head back on, and then we're done. Jobs are good. Now the only thing that we've used from this filter as it came from the manufacturer is the fine pad. We've added a coarse pad, a medium pad, some primary settlement media, and some good biological media. And the biological media I've used, as I said before, is the Biohome Ultimate. That is to support aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Fair enough, you know, there's a lot of water going through this thing. The actual water itself in here won't be anaerobic, so it won't be anaerobic conditions in the filter. But inside the filter media, the water slowed right down, anaerobic conditions develop there. That's how we're able to support aerobic and the anaerobic bacteria. It's the aerobic bacteria that sorts out the ammonia and nitrite, which, to be honest, any filter setup pretty much anyway will do. It's very easy to support aerobic bacteria. The anaerobic bacteria, however, is another matter. That doesn't just grow anywhere, it only likes areas of exceptionally slow flow, deoxygenated water, areas where ordinarily, if say you're just using ceramic rings or something, you couldn't create that in here. You need that porous media. Slow the flow down, create anaerobic conditions in the media in a safe environment, and then you'll process the ammonia, the nitrite, and also the nitrate. But you do need a certain amount of media to be able to do that. We always say one kilo of media, or 2.2 pounds of media, per 100 litres, or 26 US gallons, for a normally stocked tank. If you've got a heavily stocked tank, you can possibly go up to two kilos of media per 100 litres, or 4.4 pounds of media per 52 US gallons. 
hopefully I'll have got those figures right. It's difficult to convert all the time. So after explaining that, we've got two kilos of media in here, which is 4.4 pounds. If we work on the tank being normally stocked, that makes this filter set up the way it is suitable for achieving a full cycle, which is the processing of ammonia, nitrite and nitrate for an aquarium of approximately 200 litres or 52 US gallons. Obviously, if you've got a tank smaller than that, great. You know, you can never have too much filtration. But if your tank is creeping towards being heavily stocked, this filter would probably be suitable for tanks up to 100 litres or 26 US gallons, which might not sound much, but we're talking about a full cycle. So, as far as the differences between this and the previous model goes, um, other than cosmetic, I can't really notice that much difference. <laughs> because this one has the big hole going through the trays, this one actually takes less media to fill it. In the previous model, um, that was the model without the, the provision for the UV part, um, we managed to get 1.2 kilos per tray, which was about roughly 2.5 kilos into this. In this we've got just over 2, so we do lose a little bit of the capacity by having that big hole going all the way down the middle. You know, it's, it's still a pretty solidly made filter. They're still banging them out very cheaply. They're still getting mixed reviews. Um, but really for a budget filter, there's certainly a lot worse out there. You know, the, they are a decent filter, especially for the price. You can get filters for twice the price that are only half as good. So it is something that I would, I would say, consider it. You know, unless you've got a bigger budget and you can go to one of the name brands. You know, the high door filters are very good. Fluval filters are very good. The older Eheims are good. The Pro 4 series is dog, it's awful. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, they're pretty substantial filters. These are the same as Sun Sun filters though. So bear that in mind. I see people arguing all the time about which one's the best. It's like arguing if your right hand is better than your left hand. They're both exactly the same, you know? These come out the same factory in China, whether they go to All Pond Solutions or to Sun Sun, they're exactly the same. So there's no need to argue about which one's better or which one's worse, you know? They're both decent. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it wherever you want. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next episode.